So the butter part of butter chicken. I mean, I was just sitting here, like, spoonful after spoonful. And I'm like, um, I need to share this with y'all guys. My name is Amanda. Welcome to my channel. I love to cook and I love having y'all come along with me for this adventure. So it was just a couple of years ago actually that I had Indian food for the first time, which really is quite surprising actually because I love cuisines from around the world. My kids don't like spicy food, so I do a very mild version of this butter chicken, um, but I still love it, spicy or not. So again, I am not an authority on Indian foods, but this is my home version that I have found to be quite tasty. So, and it comes together pretty quickly too. All right, so I'm gonna start off with a can of tomato sauce. I'm just gonna put that down in my sink and get it out later. So this is, you know, just plain tomato sauce. And you know me, I don't really do any measuring. Um, and I really, you know, invite you to try to experiment. And, you know, sometimes measuring is important, but sometimes it's a matter of a little bit of this and a little bit of that till you get the taste you like. So this is coconut milk. And <laughs> this particular jug, so I used it the other day for my Thai soup that I made. This one's really thick. I don't remember buying it this thick before at the store, but you want it to be kind of thick. Another, if you don't like coconut or you're allergic to it or whatnot, you can use heavy cream also. Oh. <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna put in a good glob of that. Seriously, I've never seen it this thick, but hey, I'm not complaining. That, I like thick coconut. All right. So instead of fresh ginger today, I'm gonna go ahead with my squeezed ginger just for ease of use. But, you know, fresh is always best. And because I don't have to chop, because I'm just gonna throw it in there, I've got a couple of cloves of garlic. And now for my spices. All right, I'm gonna go grab a little measuring spoon just, to, just so I can kind of give you some eyeballing kind of ideas. All right. I'm actually getting really low on my gar garam masala. I need to buy some more. Um, so this is a key ingredient to this butter chicken. So I use a good tablespoon and a half. Actually, I probably have about two tablespoons. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use all of it. Like I said, I got these out mostly just to kind of give you some rough ideas of this the amounts. And then this is cardamom, which is a, an ingredient in most garam masala blends, because this is a curry blend. But I really like the cardamom. It just is, it's so floral, and it just, I, I don't know. I love it. So I'm gonna use about, it's pretty strong. So definitely not as much as that other garam masala. So I'm using almost a full teaspoon of that. And I might put more after. So I blend it up and then we're gonna taste it and see what we want. So this is cinnamon, again, a very strong uh, seasoning. So I'm just gonna use a half teaspoon of that. Some cumin. Um, again, another half teaspoon. And turmeric. Some people call it turmeric but I think it's actually pronounced turmeric. All right, did I get everything? Oh, and then to make it a little extra tomato-y, I add some tomato paste, which this tube is almost empty. Oops, squeeze it out. I'm just gonna go ahead and use up the rest of this tube. I love these tubes because, you know, when you buy the tomato paste in a can and you only want a tablespoon, then you gotta figure out if you it's worth storing the rest or, which sometimes I'll put it in a Ziploc bag and freeze it. But in these tubes, you can just use a tablespoon or two and you're good. All right, which is probably, it's probably about a tablespoon of 
tomato paste. But that's because that's what I had in my tube left. All right, we're gonna go ahead and blend this up. Gotta plug it in though. Oh yeah, one hint is always make sure it's off before you plug it in. Okay, one thing I did forget was salt, but I'm gonna go ahead and taste it and then I'll add some salt. Oops. Okay, it actually, I'm not gonna put too much salt in there. All these seasonings give it so much flavor, you don't really need that much. Um, mm, that's so good. Okay, I think it does need a little bit more coconut milk. I want it to be a little bit creamier. Plop, plop, plop. All right. And we'll mix that in too. And you wanna make sure if you put the garlic cloves in whole, make sure that they get really minced up in there. This is a Vitamix, which can handle that really well. All right. All right, I'm gonna, well, let's taste it again real quick. And yes, I can double dip my spoon because I'm just cooking for my family. Oh yeah, just a little extra coconut milk. I just needed that. Okay, I'm gonna get this cleaned up and we'll get our chicken prepped and on to the next step. Okay, so normally I like to work right next to my skillet, especially if I'm chopping a bunch of vegetables and then gonna cook or saute them. So I kind of chop and drop as I go, but today I decided I was gonna do it this way. Um, yay, I finally, finally, oh wait, I went out. So normally I have a little garbage bowl next to me, especially when I'm working over there. But today, since I'm working next to the sink here, I'm actually gonna throw my peelings straight into the sink and use this to take over to my stove when I'm ready. Um, yes, I'm so proud of myself. Uh, you'll see in my last video, I was using a camping knife because I finally took my knives in. And guys, if you're using sharp knives, don't. It just makes such an amazing difference to have a sharp knife. I cannot believe I put up with my dull knives for as long as I did. So I'm just cutting my onion in half and then making little moon shapes. I'll break them up. I like to have just kind of thin slivers in my butter chicken. A lot of times I'll actually do bell pepper in it too, which I don't know how authentic that is. I think a lot of times it's just onion and chicken and there aren't any other vegetables in the curry itself, but I like to add bell pepper to it myself. And that's the cool thing about cooking at home for your family. You can add and subtract ingredients as you see fit. I'm gonna serve this today with some roasted cauliflower with curry powder kind of baked on top. <laughs> I'm gonna serve this with roasted cauliflower and some rice. Sometimes I make, okay, I'm trimming off the fat. Sometimes I make homemade non bread, but I wasn't really feeling like spending that much time on dinner tonight. Okay, so I've got my chicken breast here, and what I wanna do is cut it into kind of, not as, like, I don't know, they're about half inch thick pieces and I'm cutting at an angle. So I'm getting these kind of like medallions shapes. I'm gonna put them in, I've got another bowl here so I can take it over to the stove. So just cutting down at an angle, about a quarter inch to a half inch thick. You wanna be consistent with your thickness so that they cook up at the same time. And I will get these chickens cut up and we'll get it cooked. All right, got my chicken, my onions. We'll go to the stove. All right, so the funny thing about this dish is that I don't cook it that often. And whenever I do, I'm like, why have I not, why don't I make this more often? It's so delicious and so easy. I think because I have to get the Vitamix out I think to myself, it's gonna be more complicated than it is. 
it's really not. Okay, so I'm using some avocado oil, but my thing is empty again. I love decanting my oils just because I like having my kitchen look um, just clean and neat, and I like having my oils next to my stove. But this bottle, I really need to get a bigger one. It's like always running out. Am I all, oh, no, there's some in there. So I'm just gonna finish off with some olive oil because I didn't have quite as much avocado oil as I want. All right, we're gonna get these onions in here. And I've got the heat. I'm gonna put it on medium. I don't want them to caramelize. I just want them to get nice and soft. It's gonna take probably you know three or four minutes and I'll be back. All right, now that my onions are you know, nice and soft, I'm gonna go ahead and add in my chicken. Now normally I wouldn't add this much chicken in a dish at once if I wanted it to be brown, but I'm not really working on browning this chicken. We're actually gonna be poaching it in the liquid, so it's completely fine to add it all in at once. I'm trying to make sure that they get separated and get the onions down in between a little bit. I'm gonna add a little bit of seasoning to the chicken itself before I add the sauce that I got back there. And a little bit of pepper. So today it feels like spring. I live in the Pacific Northwest and the high today, Earlier, it said it was 72 outside. Oh, I am so ready for spring. I don't know about you. There goes Watson again. On my last video, I was trying to like count how many times does he make the lap around the island. It's pretty funny. All right, so making sure that I just got that salt and pepper kind of on my chicken here, and I'm gonna add in the sauce that we made. Mmm so fragrant. It's the cardamom. If you've never cooked with cardamom before, I definitely recommend you try it out. It isn't used in American cuisines that I know of, although I, I don't know how Americanized butter chicken is actually. Um, the Indian restaurant that I go to in town, well, before <laughs> Before COVID, <laughs> the restaurant that I used to go to all the time had Indian chicken on the restaurant, on the menu, and they were pretty authentic. All right, so now I'm gonna work this sauce in, and then, oh, you know what, I'm out of butter. I usually keep butter um, there, but I need to go grab some out of the fridge, so. I'm gonna lower this down. All right, so note to self. <laughs> Make sure my oils and butter and salt and pepper are full before I start filming a video. <laughs> All right, so the butter part of butter chicken. So I'm gonna cut off a couple good chunks of butter. I don't like to blend it in the Instapot because it makes cleaning the Instapot harder because the butter will get coated on the Instapot. And not, why am I saying Instapot? Vitamix, the blender. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, the butter, especially if it's hard butter like this, it gets coated on the blender itself and it just makes cleaning it that much harder. So I like to add it at this stage and it'll just melt in and be delicious. So, well, I hope you are enjoying this video. If you are, make sure to give it a thumbs up. I'm glad that you have stopped by. I love reading all the comments and seeing this channel grow. It's been just such an amazing experience and I've been able to meet some really awesome people from around the country and even a few people from around the world on my YouTube journey already. Okay, so we're going to like keep this on kind of low, medium low. We don't want it to boil up too much. Actually, make sure it doesn't come to a very high boil because that will toughen your chicken up and nobody wants that. So 
a low simmer is as hot as you want this. And we're just gonna let it cook until this chicken cooks through. And while it's cooking, I'm gonna prep up some uh, roasted curried cauliflower and put my rice in my Instapot. I love cooking rice in the Instapot. And I will be back to show you what all of this looks like at the end. Okay, so like I said earlier, it's a warm day today. And so my hair had to go up. I had to change into a short sleeve shirt and put on shorts <clears throat> while the chicken was kicking because man, it's warm today. Anyway, I just was tasting this chicken. Mm. I mean, the sauce. I mean, I was just sitting here like spoonful after spoonful. And I'm like, um, I need to share this with y'all guys. It's amazing. So <clears throat> here's the finished chicken and it's all its saucy goodness. And when you can just eat the sauce straight up, then you know you got a good dish. And then let me take you over here. I'm using my toaster oven because again, it's so hot. I didn't want to do the oven and warm up the entire house. And let's not talk about how I need to clean out my toaster oven. It's on the to-do list. But so that's just some cauliflower that I rubbed with olive oil and sprinkled some dry curry on. I'll make a really good side dish. 